Hi, my name is Robert Harrison, and today we're going to look at how to actually uh, reprogram your your T962 stroke T962A reflow oven, having installed my upgrade card. So let's start off with making sure the oven itself is actually uh, powered on. So you should turn the oven on, and it should come up with a nice little beep like that, and the um, the screen should be displaying the menu, or certainly will be, after a few seconds of initialization. Now, make sure your computer is connected with a USB connection to the upgrade card, the micro USB um, connection on the card. There are various ways you can do that. You can just have a direct cable, which goes from the computer to the micro USB connector on the board, or you can put a little um, dongle, or short cable that has a panel mount uh, connector on one end and a micro USB on the other and then you can make a little panel mount uh, connection to the back of your oven to uh, make it easy to uh, connect or, or, or to disconnect and reconnect the USB connection. Anyway the, we do need to know which COM port is connected and as it's a USB connection you can see that there's a communications COM port 1 here and I know it's a USB connection that we've used, and I can see here it's USB serial port, and it's on COM port 3. So I need to remember that COM port 3 for a process a little bit further down. The next thing I need to do, I'm just going to, well, is to launch this MCP221 utility. This is free from the MCP website and will allow us to actually access the UART chip on my controller upgrade. The reason why we want to access this is we want to be able to um, change the values of the G general purpose uh, outputs on pins 2 and 3. At the moment, the output of these is high, and this means the, um, the uh, oven will function normally. But we also want to put the oven now into programming mode so we can flash a new version of the, uh, of the um, firmware into the oven. So when you launch this it will read uh, some information off the off the UART device. You can see here you don't have to worry too much about these, don't mess around with them, they just they ignore those. Uh, the, the, descriptor, the descriptor should uh, say something about it being the controller update card. It's from the Icarus project. You'll have some arbitrary number in here. By default this will come up like this, power up defaults and volatile. Now the changes we are going to make are not changes we want to make permanently to the um, to the um, to the to the UART uh, chip. So we want to just make sure we go into this current and volatile setting only. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about everything else. Uh, only that we now we're going to actually um, put the uh, oven into into programming mode. Now the GP2 is actually connected to um, the let's see if I can get this run the right way. I think it's the uh, this is connected to the ISP pin. So first thing we want to do is drop this to low, and say configure device, and make sure this also is successful. Now for the next stage we want to do is the GP3 pin. This is the reset pin, and we're going to drop this to low. And at this point, the oven will will go into programming mode. And, it, and because the, um, the fan and the heating pins will now be floating, the oven will start to heat and the fan will go to maximum immediately. And you should be able to hear this when you press this button on configure device. In fact, if you very, listen very carefully to my microphone or, or the audio, you will possibly hear this, uh, the oven go into this mode. Right, we're in programming mode. I've kept quiet there just to see if you can hear that audio. I'm not sure whether it'll pick it up or not. Then the next stage is to go in reverse, set this back to high, configure device, and set this one back to high, configure device. This puts us back to where we were before. Now, remembering the COM port from here, COM port 3, we need to launch another program which is free, uh, open source. It's called Flash Magic. Um, if you Google that, you'll find it. I will also put a link to it in the uh, documentation. You want to make sure you select the right chip. In this case, on my uh, on my uh, oven, it is. Oh, sorry about this. My son suddenly decided he's going to uh, buy something off Steam. 
he will uh, please make sure that you select the right chip, which is the LC LPC two one three four. Uh, I'm not sure that there's any other chips in use, but it might be worth just double checking that if you look at the chip that's actually in your um, in your on in your uh, oven. But I'm pretty confident that will work. Choose the right COM port, COM port three. Now, for various reasons, I've settled on comp on board rates one four four zero zero. This is the only one I've got to work successfully on repetitively, so it's just above the 9600 there. Uh, all these settings stay the same. Make sure you get the, uh, the uh, oscillator right, 11.0592. Um, erase blocks used by Hexvar, you want that set. You need to um, identify and browse to the location of the T962 hex file. Um, I'll, there'll be a link for you to download this, but just make sure you actually set this up properly. Uh, you can choose to verify after programming. It's probably sensible to do that um, and possibly to uh, fill the unused flash as well. I think I'd probably have that setting on. N no, I wouldn't. That's fine. Erase blocks used by Hexbox. That's fine. So that these are the good settings. You can verify after programming if you want. It just takes a lot longer because it needs to read back and read it. Once you get to this position, before you do anything else, as in do not click start until you've done this, ISP re-device signature. This means that you are connected to the actual uh, LCP chip inside the oven, and it's got the bootloader version on there, and it should look something like that. That's a really good sign that you've made a connection. Once you've done that, clicking start here will start the programming process. Here we go. It raises the blocks and it goes into programming mode. This is not a particularly quick operation. It'll take about one minute. I shall leave it up here on the screen. Let's think if there's anything else I've missed out that I should have told you. I don't think so. Nope. There are alter alternative ways of programming this, and there's also ways of accessing the oven using Linux. Uh, I've, I've used, I often use a Raspberry Pi for doing this because I can actually get far faster board rates. But this is the easiest one and the one that most people will probably use. You know, even if you are not keen Windows users, in fact, if you try to keep well away from Windows, most people have access to at least one Windows system which they can, they can use to, um, to program the oven. If you want to um, use a Macintosh or indeed a Linux uh, um, variant, I would suggest you look at the pages on the um, on the uh, United Engineering's website for re reflashing the firmware. It doesn't really matter which firmware you use. You can use the my hex file, or you can do use the one from Unified mm. Engineering. They both work. I am. I have just made some changes to the Unified Engineering code for I get a better reflow on my lead-free solder for the um, for the for the uh, reflow profile that I'm using. I've also used the name of my lead-free lead-free solder for that profile, so I recognise the profile and it matches my uh, my um, solder. Right, we're getting there. You'll probably hear quite a bit of heat. Here we go. It's 800, it's 400, 0, 0. And there we go. Because I haven't done the verification stage. If you do the verification stage, it just does the whole thing backwards to verify everything. Right, at this point, you should be quite capable to um, turn off uh, your oven, like so, and turn it back on. You get a little beep like that, and now it should come up with a completely different operating system if you haven't already previously um, re, re, um, reflashed the software. And this will be your first time you see the new so so software. And you can go check that by going to, if you press something like F1 and about, you'll get something about the version and so on and so forth. If you press F1 again, you'll get some other information. And if you press F3, you'll get some various bits of information about what's going on inside the oven, as well as being able to get cold junction information now. This is something that was missing on the original firmware. Anyway, I shall let you have a play with that and, 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 and experiment. Um, 
So I guess the other thing we want to do is have a little look at uh, what information comes up with the oven. So we know we're still connected to COM port 3. I've got putty on here, which is, you can use anything, but um, putty's uh, as good as any as a terminal emulator. Now, I'm going to change this to COM port 3 because that's what we're connected to. And note the speed here. This is a serial connection at 115200. That's 115200. And that is the speed that's been set in the firmware for communication. And if you open this up, we get some gobbledygook like that. Right. I don't think we need to worry too much about that. What I'm going to do is power cycle the oven at this point uh, with a bit of luck. We get a little bit of information coming out here. So what's happening? It's a quick bit of initialization uh, going on there. Reset reason. It's a power on reset and brownout device reset. Reset. I think that means running on. This is the the um, CPU waiting for keys to be released. There are no keys being pressed. The buzzer goes beep. Blah 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 blah. And it looks at the one wire interface. Now this is these are all the thermocouples that are actually on my board. Um, and it identifies them here, 0, 1, 2, and 3, to give us four uh, thermocouples. Um, and there's no spy connection here, so that's fine. This is what we'd expect. Now, if I turn the oven into, put the oven on and start a profile, like so, you'll start to see some information coming out on the screen. I'm just going to stop the profile now. And this gives you how long the oven's, how, the, how long the profile's been running for, the temperature sensor, the values of the temperature sensors of 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0 and 1 are the existing uh, temperature sensors which come with the oven, and 2 and 3 are optional accessories you can add to the, to the oven. Uh, there's quite a bit of discrepancy here at the moment because I've got two temperature sensors it's all connected <laughs> to some big black mass in there, which has been heating up, and the other two are, are, are the two sensors which hang slightly higher in the oven. So I would just ignore that for the time being. Um, the set point is where it's aiming to get to, which is 50 degrees. So this is well into all, all of these sensors are well over it at the moment. The actual temperature is taken as an average between these two, and it comes up 59.8. Uh, and the heat and the fan, this is the fan settings and so on and so forth. The cold junction temperature is currently at 29.1 degrees, and the mode is in reflow. I'll leave you to play with that. In fact, if you can send some... Uh, key sequences, I think, from here. I think put question mark for help. Yeah, if you send question mark to the uh, to the application, uh, you'll get all this information. If you want to do something about this, so if you, if you the best thing to do is highlight the commands here, like about, and then right click and paste it, and you get a load of information there. I have no idea what that means. Well, there you go. It's the EPUM content, etc. You can set it to bake mode, so you can actually manually control the oven um, from here if you want. And it's, it's you know it's self-explanatory. I'll leave you to go through that as well. But just thought I'd mention that. So if you hit the question mark, up comes the menu. That can be useful. Right. So. Oh, so yeah. You, so uh, here I could do like a. Um, And a set point so that you can uh, bake the thing. We've got into some sort of bake mode here, and it's aiming for 30 degrees, the minimum temperature. And this will actually keep cooling the oven now. So the fan's gone to maximum here, so it's trying to cool the oven to 30 degrees. And when these two get down to 30 degrees, it would stop. I'm not going to bother wait waiting for that. Uh, and if I hit the uh, question mark here, I just need to grab the uh, quit or stop. There you go, stopped. Right, and I think that's pretty much it really for all I need to show you here. Good luck. If this doesn't work, <laughs> first of all, um, particularly this trying to identify the device. When you go down to ISP and um, read device signature, this can be very fussy. Clearly, it's not going to work this time because I haven't put it into programming mode, so I'd have to go through all that high and low. 
But these are the sort of things you see, fail to water board, step one, blah, blah, blah. You need to reset this thing like we did before, set this to low, then this to low, then this to high, then this back to high, make sure it's in the current volatile mode, um, and then do this ISP bit, read the device signature, finding that works fine, click start, jobs are good. And having made sure you put in here the location of the hex file that you want to upload. You can either use mine or Unified Engineering. I'll put a link to both in the software. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope this has been helpful for you.